want my, I want my 24p. I want my 24p. Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here, and today we're looking at the Canon EOS M6 Mark II full review. You did see us play with this earlier at Atlanta as part of the launch, and there we got to do a really good test of the fast action capabilities of that camera. But today, it's raining outside. This camera is absolutely not weather sealed. That's the first fact of the day for this camera. So we're gonna head inside, maybe have a beer, hang out, relax, do some indoor low light shooting tonight. So we get really great access to the Toolshed Brewery here. It's awesome that they've been gracious enough to let us do that. We've known Graham and Toolshed Brewing Company for many, many years now. So thank you to them for letting us play here. I definitely want to test things like low light performance today. I want to test things like resolution sharpness today. Uh, so let's get to it, have some fun, play some shuffleboard, drink some beer. I think it's really important to point out that the M6 Mark II is officially actually replacing the M6 and the M5 as well. So those two series combining into one. And so what are we getting from each series? Certainly here you're getting an awesome grip and you're getting the great dual dial interface of the M5. I love them. I mean, they're very nice feeling. They feel quality. The dial function button is still there. Everything very customizable. I really do like the new MFAF selector switch here and that button is in a perfect position for doing back button focusing. So what's borrowed over from the Canon EOS M6? Well, I guess you could say the complete lack of built-in EVF. We do still have a pop-up flash. I do like that that's included there. And of course you can get the DC2 EVF it is nice that you can remove it, I guess, if you want a compact solution. It's 2.36 million dots, which is pretty average for this kind of price point in this market, and it's better than nothing. I do miss the built-in molded EVF of the M5 series, but I get why they're doing this. It is gonna be added cost for some of you, unless you already have this from an existing kit that you might have in the M series, or if you very likely are gonna get it as a package with the kit lens, the 15 to 45. I just don't think that's the best choice of lens to fit this particular body. I've looked everywhere for George's Chameleon in there. I can't see him, but if you guys can with the 32 plus megapixels on the sensor, let us know. We'll be happy to claim the prize for you. So we want to take just a little bit of time here and talk about actually probably the most important change and upgrade that we've seen in this line of cameras now. With the M6 Mark II and the EOS 90D, we now have a brand new 32 plus megapixel APS-C size sensor. This is a big deal. It is a lot of resolution for an APS-C sensor. And at the same time, from what we've seen, we have no real downsides when it comes to low light performance or dynamic range. And that is an awesome achievement for Canon. Now, when it comes to lenses, I want to say this right off the bat. Today, shooting in a dark brewery like this, I'm going to be using the 32 millimeter 1.4 for most of this. Not only because it can handle the low light, but frankly, this is one of the only M series lenses that can handle the resolution of this sensor. The only other one I'd really kind of trust would be the 28 millimeter macro. Even the 22 millimeter prime, I don't think is gonna give ideal results here. But also, if you saw the Atlanta video, I'm sure you did notice that we shot a lot of those with an EFS adapter using the 1755 2.8. It just cannot handle this sensor's resolution. And when we shot the uh, portraits with this 32 millimeter, you see a marked improvement in image quality. So what does this mean for this system if you're gonna use this camera? You could absolutely use an EF adapter with a lot of the excellent L-series lenses available for full frame, but now we're talking about way more expense, way more bulk for a very compact system like this. Otherwise, looks like you're gonna have to look to third parties. Sigma have their very awesome trio of prime lenses coming out in 1.4 apertures as well, and I'm sure those will also handle it. But unfortunately, for Canon M users, your zooms aren't gonna necessarily give great results here, and it doesn't look like we have any more new lenses on the horizon. Now, when we compared this camera against the EOS 90D, we expected the SLR to be the faster focusing, faster shooting camera. Turns out that's not the case. This is for a couple of reasons. 
First off, the M6 Mark II can shoot 14 frames per second with autofocus tracking, although to be fair, the tracking performance was not great at 14 frames per second, and I found myself consistently dropping that back down in order to get better tracking capabilities, but still a very fast camera. But this also has the raw burst shooting mode where it'll pre-buffer about a half second of time so you don't have to be absolutely spot on getting that decisive moment. You can be close, scale back to the moment you want to capture, and you've got it within that half second window. This does let you shoot raw. It does crop it to 20 megapixels. And unfortunately, it's really hard to follow moving action. But if you're trying to get something captured in motion and get that decisive moment, if it's not moving erratically, that mode can be very effective. I've touched on this in Atlanta before, but I want to mention it again, how I like to set up the M6 II and something you might want to try if you pick one up yourself. First off, I do love back button focusing. So it's in a great position on the back, set the camera to servo, leave it there, and then I can basically have the best of both worlds, single focus or servo, just by letting go of my thumb. But I also really like the tracking on this camera. It is much improved and in overall performance, the dual pixel AF is vastly improved over what we've had before. I like to have my tracking set for the initial autofocusing point so wherever that point is whether it be the center or wherever I touch on the screen when I start focusing the camera will now use that as its tracking subject it's smart enough to pick up if that's a face or eyes as well so it'll automatically do that and it just makes a lot of sense now this camera I have talked about how well you can customize it the dial function is basically a mini quick menu they can set of course you do have the excellent quick menu itself with the touchscreen interface it's very easy to use but you don't have a ton of customizable buttons on here. So when I'm using the multi-function button on the front, I have that set personally for the raw burst mode because going to the menu and choosing it in the menu is a real pain in the ass. And I want to be able to set that quickly. So I've set that there. ISO as well, although you have excellent dial function, quick menu and touchscreen interface with ISO right there on the, on the screen, sometimes it gets a little bit cluttered. I like having a hard button set. I've set the asterisk button here on the back to do that, especially consider that when you have this up to your eye with an EVF, it's nice to be able to hit that and change it when you don't have access to the touchscreen. Oh, oh yeah, okay, I, I love this feature on these cameras. So we don't have a joystick on this camera, which of course we love to have on bigger systems like SLRs. However, I have the option to bring this up to my eye and then use the touch screen on the back to move the autofocusing point around. There's zero lag, it works beautifully. So that's a big plus for Canon on this M6 Mark II. Now USB charging on cameras is very useful and it's very ubiquitous on a lot of cameras in the market right now. However, just like the G5X Mark II and the G7X Mark III, the M6 Mark II requires PD rated chargers. So this means you have to make sure you get those if you wanna charge it. And it really does hurt the convenience factor of being able to just throw on a smartphone charger and get your camera topped up if you're driving around. So when it comes to brewing beer, you gotta be patient. You gotta give a lot of time for things to ferment until they're ready to happen. And uh, it takes about the same amount of time as this camera does to clear its buffer. I'm joking. Not really, actually. This thing is quite slow. Unfortunately, this is a problem with a lot of the cameras on the market in this price range. Even with fast cards, it takes a long time to clear that buffer. So although 14 frames per second is awesome, I think you gotta be really choosy about what kind of bursts you do. Short, quick bursts, because if you fill it, you're gonna be waiting. Okay, just a little throwaway tidbit, but I think it's important. The M6 Mark II is an absolutely light system, and I do feel the mechanical shutter smacking in the, in the camera, which in low light like this is not gonna be as ideal as, say, a heavier body like the 90D, so keep that in mind. So in regards to rolling shutter on this new sensor, not a huge improvement. I mean, honestly, if you're shooting electronic shutter, you're still gonna get some strange diagonals in photography, so be careful you don't shoot fast action or movement or whip the camera around. Now, to be honest, in raw burst mode, it gets a little bit better just because there is a crop there, so that reduces some of that rolling shutter, so it is more usable in that mode. I still wouldn't do any fast whips with it, and again, it's hard to track this camera in the raw burst mode anyways because you're always seeing a delay in the last shot. In video, though, it is a much better story, and Jordan's now kind of come up next to talk about video capabilities on this camera. As I said earlier, I do want my 24P, and I don't know why Canon's taking them away from us, but if you're a more serious video shooter, honestly, this probably isn't the camera for you, but if you're a little more casual, the usability is the best thing that this has. It has an EVF option if you want to shoot in direct sunlight. Tilt screen is very bright and easy to see otherwise, and you've got that wonderful touch interface with Canon's dual pixel autofocus. Just tap the subject you want, and it'll do a really wonderful job tracking it. Hey everyone, sorry about the weird change here, but unfortunately, the rest of the take I recorded back at the bar 
we were getting quite a bit of interference in our wireless system. Concerns with cannons amps are terrible. The M6 does not offer a headphone jack, so we didn't know about that until we got back and started editing the footage. So here we are, so I can talk about a few other things that annoyed me with the M6. Now, I do like that we get 120 frame recording in 1080 with this camera, and the quality is okay. However, as soon as you start recording, you lose your dual pixel autofocus. And a lot of the time with slow-mo, I start recording, and then I find the focus after the fact. Unfortunately, if you try using that technique, you'll just wind up looking at a bunch of out-of-focus video, like what we've got right here. But the major drawback to this is the 4K recording. Looking at the footage out of this camera, it is certainly sharper when you're recording 4K than in its 1080 mode. However, it doesn't hold a candle to the super sampled video that we're seeing out of things like the Fuji X-T30 or the Sony a6400. So if you are a professional looking for very high quality video, this is gonna be a letdown. But if you're a more casual shooter looking for really reliable autofocus, nice colors and a mic jack, it's honestly not a bad choice. All right, so I've used this camera on two separate shoots, and this is how I feel about it. First off, I think Canon is on point in the ergonomics game. It is just complicated enough and complex enough and customizable enough to please more advanced photographers, but still very easy and intuitive to use. I like the grip, I like the dials. Canon does this so well. Image quality, I think, is a big step up for Canon. It is nice to see that we have a brand new sensor. Video quality is another game, though, unfortunately. It's not amazing, and so that's gonna be something you're gonna have to decide whether that's really Really important to you or not. Now price on this camera doesn't seem prohibitive at first but keep in mind you're most likely going to want that EVF so if you don't have one already factor that in as an additional cost or you can get the kit with the 1545 it'll often come with the EVF but remember that that lens although usable is not ideal for the resolution of this camera and that really brings me to the main point on the M6 Mark II. As much as I love using this camera and as much as I think Canon stepped up the image quality game you are going to have to find lenses that support that better image quality and that can be challenging. Canon has just not supported the system very well so you're looking to third-party manufacturers or adapters with alternative glass and that's all gonna have its own challenges. Anyways I hope you guys found this review very useful on the M6 Mark II. For photographers this could be a very powerful tool. Please don't forget check out our Twitter and Instagram feeds, subscribe to the channel, let us know what you think but otherwise thanks so much for joining us. We're gonna see you very soon with another review.